Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life. Whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men ask for the right words to say to be more successful, attractive, and desirable. But I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because every man is different. So giving words or scripts would be like giving a tall, thin man a shorter, wider man's pants or vice versa. The words have to make sense for you and your personality, and there's so much happening beneath the surface that people are responding to. If you're interested in how to become a better lover and leader in your own unique way, go to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz, or you can text ALIVE to 44144. It only takes a couple minutes and you'll start to get an idea of how you can be both more respected and desired. After you fill it out, we can schedule a time to review your quiz and talk about your specific challenges and desires. So again, go to either shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text ALIVE to 44144. That's A-L-I-V-E to 44144. Enjoy this episode of Man Alive. All right, hello and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I feel honored today to be here with you, Rabbi Friedman. And, um, you know, as we were talking a little bit before we got started, I was saying that you seem to be teaching about Judaism in the world, but also I've seen some of your videos and resources on current events and helping people make sense of what's happening in the world. And so I feel excited to be here with you today to talk about uh, human nature in a way and conflict and misunderstanding and this idea of some people being good and some people being, being bad and how do we navigate that within our own personal relationships and in the world? And so thank you for being willing to have, you know, conversations in this challenging time. Thank you. Challenging and, per- and possibly discouraging. Yeah, very discouraging, it feels like to me. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure that we can minimize the challenge, mm-hmm. but we can certainly minimize the discouragement. Uh-huh you know, if we have our thinking straight. Mm. So what really is the conflict in, I'm talking about um, the average typical uh, couple, husband, wife, where's the friction? What's the problem? Mm. That's a great question. We can Uh, break it down. Like you married each other, you must like each other. (laughs) What happened? That's not, and the question is not where did the love go. I, I, I can accept a relationship without love. Mm, you can. Yeah, but where did the decency go? Right, the decency is that's <laughs> so painful to watch when the decency yeah. goes away. So you see these couples. Okay, so they don't love each other. All right, but where's this nastiness coming from? Yeah. And very often, the people themselves are not nasty it's to anybody true. else. To anybody else, except for somehow there seems to be, oh, I have a right in this relationship to be nasty. Shocking. Yeah. So, so what, do we do? <laughs> what, do we, what do we do about that? It seems like we can trace it to that famous quote, familiarity breeds contempt. People who are nice, considerate, kind, fun people, but where the familiarity is like crossing some border, some red line, it starts to produce contempt, Hmm. which is a very ugly word. Yeah. It's worse than hate. Hmm. There's a certain cruelty. Cruelty. The cruelty. Well, and it reminds me of how I speak to myself, right? It's like, it's almost, uh, my, my theory around this has been, it's like someone stops becoming other almost and starts becoming so close to me. That, and, and I speak to myself, you know, more horribly than I would speak to anyone else. So it almost becomes like, well, then it's okay for me to treat this other person this way. 
interestingly, people are much more vicious when they tweet or text than they would face to face. I've seen both. Yeah, painfully so. So where is this familiarity that breeds contempt? Mm. I mean, who becomes more familiar with each other than a married couple? Right. So they're not supposed to be familiar? You're supposed to be married for years and years and not be familiar because then you're going to have contempt? Right. Well, it seems like then we need to break down what familiar actually is or what we give ourselves license to do in that familiarity. Yeah. You would think familiarity would be a very welcome uh, part of marriage. Yeah. Comfort like an old shoe. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's going to breed contempt. What are we supposed to do? Live in separate houses? I've actually had that thought. <laughs> <laughs> As someone who's divorced and someone who's thought, you know, I don't necessarily need to get married again. I don't even need to live in the same house. I could just live next door. That would be really nice, my avoidant personality. But so are you actually saying that familiarity in itself is not something we should be striving for? Hmm. It, would, it would be a tragedy either way. Hmm. <clears throat> Breeding contempt is certainly not good. No. But not being familiar, that doesn't, that, that, that that's doesn't not good either. No. <clears throat> so there's a certain kind of familiarity that is healthy and good. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain kind of familiarity that is destructive. Yeah. And breeds. how do you support people to have that kind of familiarity that's healthy? So here's, here's what tradition, Jewish tradition, spoken unspoken, written or non-written, but it's, it's real. There's a huge difference between intimacy and sexuality. Hmm. It used to be that sexuality meant intimacy, right? Yeah. But it's been a long time yes. since the two have gone separate ways. Mm -hmm. Probably since the 60s. Mm, interesting. Right, because you can have sex without intimacy. You can have sex with intimacy. Free love meant free of, free of importance, free of significance, mm -hmm. free of commitment, free. Yeah. So it stopped being intimate. Mm. So what happens is this. Intimacy, it turns out, and this is a long, this is a long topic, a big topic, but just to get to the point. Yeah. Intimacy is a genuine, essential human need. Without it, we are less than human. Yeah. Sex is not. Hmm. It's not a need. It's a pleasure. Seems like a very a strong need. desire, and some people would call it a need, but how do you think of it as not a need? People can go all their lives without sex, and they're perfectly human beings. Huh. They might feel distressed or upset or right. whatever, but they're not going to die. Like having to go without chocolate. Right, which I do these days because I'm allergic to it now. But right, it's horrible, So, but I survive. It's not like... So you can say one of the greatest pleasures in life is chocolate. Yeah. That doesn't mean that it's a need. Right. It's not a need. Interestingly, that is interesting. Because it is not a need, you can never have enough. Huh? That's interesting. Because you think if I can never have enough, doesn't that prove that it's a desperate need? No. But it doesn't. You can never have enough means you don't really need it. Hmm. Because a need can be satisfied. Huh? I was just thinking that, like, oh, so intimate. When I think about intimacy, it can be kind of satiated or satisfied. That sense of I'm understood or known or connected with i get to a point where i feel like oh okay but not everybody i mean some people actually relate or view themselves as a kind of like a bottomless hole or i can never get enough so that's that can and be confusing a psychological disorder mm -hmm. that's not natural mm -hmm. right a healthy natural human being has needs 
and the needs can be satisfied. Mm -hmm. But pleasure, when, when, when do you say, okay, enough pleasure? When Probably you break never. Out with pimples? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so sex is not really a, a need, but intimacy is. The reason intimacy is a need is because it is not good to be alone. Mm. That's biblical. It is not good for man to be alone. Mm. If, if there's one uh, desperate need that we are suffering from because that need is not being met. It's that. It's that intimacy. It's the loneliness. Mm -hmm. We feel so alone in the world. Yeah. Despite the fact that we're very sociable. Connected. Connected. Social. We're all over the place. We travel. We meet people from other countries. You come home and you're totally alone. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that wherever you go, there you are. It, it's like that song, uh, Piano Man. Yeah. There's a line in that song which really struck me as being great wisdom for a pop song, for a rock and roll song. They're sharing a drink they call loneliness. loneliness. Mm -hmm. But it's better than drinking alone. alone. Mm. Loneliness is pretty painful, but you can share it. Yeah. Get a bunch of lonely people together at least for the evening, they're not lonely. Hmm. But how do but, you go deeper with that, right? How do you, because in your spiritual way, I would imagine you support people with that loneliness a lot. But there's something worse than the loneliness. Hmm. Being alone. In right? loneliness. <clears throat> loneliness you can share with other lonely people. Right. But aloneness, there's, there's nothing you can so imagine you go to a party because you're lonely. You come home from the party and you realize you're still lonely. No, you realize you're completely alone. alone. And it's even worse than lonely. Hmm. So it turns out that this feeling of being alone in the world yeah. weakens your entire um, defense system, your, your uh, immune system, mm. it crashes and you become vulnerable to every passing disease. So it is a real health crisis to that so many people feel alone in the world. Well, and, and so many people also feel alone even though they're in relationships, right? They're not necessarily yeah. coming home alone, but they still feel alone. So I think that... Yes. You see, and that's why when I noticed that married couples uh, still feel alone, that was a shock. Yeah. Because doing marriage counseling, you kind of get used to the idea that some people just don't like each other. Mm -hmm. And that's why they need marriage counseling, because they're angry, they're hate. But when you have a decent marriage, mm -hmm what we would call a successful, functional marriage, and each of them feels alone in the world, I, I, this has never happened before. Hmm. In, you mean before this time period? Yeah. Wow. So what's, what's really happening is they're living side by side. Mm -hmm. They like each other. They get along well. It's all functional. Yep. They never really merged. Uh-huh. So they're not one. They're two people, like good roommates, yeah. who enjoy each other's company, would not want to separate. But that oneness that marriage is supposed to produce didn't happen. How do you talk about that oneness? Because you know, I know how I think about it, right? That that merging or that the union that can happen either in sharing an emotional experience or a sexual experience or even being understood. Is that how you think about the merging or the oneness? Well, here's where the problem is. Intimacy 
bonds people, cements them, and turns them into one. Mm. Sex does not. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's the tragedy. Sex actually keeps two people apart, separate. Sex without intimacy. Yeah. And the same is true with love. Mm. Love does not bond people. Interesting. For a very simple reason. I love you. That means we are innately I, separate. It's, it, it's my emotion. I'm feeling it. I'm experiencing it. Yeah. You're not. Yeah. You have to believe me. <laughs> like, believe me, I really do love you. Yeah. So you're getting it secondhand. It's hearsay. <laughs> but it's my love. Hmm. Now, if you happen to love me back, then, then the same problem exists in reverse. Right. It's shared in a way, but it's still separate. It's simultaneous. Simultaneously separate, yeah. I love and you love and it happens. At, it's like right. the fingers t touching but not ever touching. We're not one and the same. Mm -hmm. And that's why it is so easy to fall out of love. Because mm -hmm. the love never bonded us. Mm -hmm. I was enjoying my experience, my experience of love. Of love. <laughs> when I stopped experiencing it, I don't know what you're doing in my life. Huh. What are you doing in my life? Yeah, how did you, how did you get here? Okay. In, other, in other words, if I marry you for love, you're going to be alone in the world. Because I'm not married to you. Right. I'm married to the love. Married to the love. So how do you, when you're working with couples, help them create intimacy and have that experience of being merged or one? And I imagine oneness is not, you know, oh, now we are one being and we think the same and we do the same and we feel the same, but the experience of touching into that soul place together, or do you have a different way of describing it? You could describe it any way you want, but the first thing is to recognize that the two things, if, this is really ironic, the two things that are preventing the oneness, that are destroying the marriage, is love and sex. Hmm. <laughs> to most people, love and sex, that is marriage. Right, that is marriage, yeah. <laughs> like what else is there? Yeah. Mortgage bills. Right? right. I mean, taking care of the kids and all the things that we have to do, but those seem to be the things that people are going for. Okay. So I don't imagine you're just going to say throw out love and throw out sex. The familiarity that breeds contempt mm -hmm. is in the bedroom. Hmm. Because when the intimacy becomes just a performance uh -huh. you're you're headed towards contempt yeah if it loses its intimacy if it becomes just an activity that two people happen to enjoy the oneness is gone and and the familiarity is completely unhealthy and will produce contempt yeah you lose respect for each other over sexual issues more than anything else. Usually sex and money people talk about, right? The two biggest relationship killers. Okay. So imagine a, a man says to a woman, I want to marry you for your money. Everybody would think that that is vulgar, that's, that's insulting, that's, that's horrible. But why? It's not because there's anything wrong with money. Yeah. It's, it's like that sense of being used for something that's, that's not you. It's not. Uh huh. Right. Because mm -hmm. when I say I want to marry you for your money, I don't really want to marry you. You, right. I don't want to marry you anymore. I want something you have. Right. Mm -hmm. So by saying I want to marry you for your money, I'm actually saying, um, is it possible that I could just have the money? Uh huh. Right. Does it have to be so complicated? <laughs> Just give me the money. Yeah. Oh, no? I have to marry you? Okay, I'll marry you. 
It is so insulting. Yeah. yeah. Thinly disguised. I love you for your money. I don't love you. I love the money. Mm -hmm. Why is that not exactly the same with love itself? Wow. Okay, that just blew my mind. So why is it not the same like with, I love, I love you for the love. I love you. That's yeah. what you're saying. I'll marry you for love. Huh. Which means, just, just give me the love. I have to put up with you. Mm. That's what it sounds like when people get, when, and when people have that contempt feeling. Like, I just wanted the love, and now I'm having to put up with you. Huh. And I never wanted to put up with you. Right. All I wanted was the love. So give me the love and shut up. Mm. What's with this opinion? You have to have an opinion? Right. And a personality? I didn't marry you for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, help. So what do people do? So this, the same thing is true with, with religion. Hmm. You know, we say to God, I love you. I worship you you i obey you can i get to heaven right when so i'm when actually you... saying just give me heaven what do you have to make everything so complicated <laughs> i just want to go to heaven mm. okay i gotta worship you to get fine <laughs> it's so it's so nasty yeah so how do we so, how do we work with this handle this what do we do so now we're starting to wake up to the fact that marriage, at the very least, has to take away the feeling of being alone in the world. Mm. That's its biggest contribution. Otherwise, we don't need marriage. Uh -huh. You don't need to be married to have love. You don't need to be married to have sex. You don't need to be married to have a roommate mm -hmm. and to share bills and to share dishwashing duties. What do we need marriage for? Right. We don't need so a young couple things. come and they say, we're very much in love with each other. We want to get married. Will you do the wedding for us? What do you say? I say, you love each other? They say, yes. I said, then too late. <laughs> <laughs> what are you getting married for? For love. Well, you already got the love. Mm. I wish you were there when I was about to get married all those years ago. Fall out of love and then come back and we'll talk about marriage. Right. But if you're marrying for love and you already have love, what are you doing? Mm. Trying to solidify the love, trying to like grasp it. But that's ridiculous. That's like saying, I'm going to force you into loving me. Yeah. You're not. You can't force me into loving you. Yeah. So... The reason we get married is because it's not good to be alone. That's why married people live longer. Mm. That's a well-known statistic. Why do they live longer? Because they're not alone. Mm. But, and yet, we're talking about how they can be, feel alone. So how, how do you help people have the intimacy? That's the point. Yeah. That's the point. So, what is different between intimacy and just casual sex? Mm -hmm. The difference is that no thing can bring two people together. Like if we both love pina colada and walks in the rain, that doesn't bring us together. Mm. That doesn't merge us. Mm -hmm. It merges each of us with the pina colada. Right. So that thing that we have in common keeps us apart. Mm. It's like we have a mutual friend. Uh -huh. We're bonded to each other. Yeah. Intimacy means this amazing capacity that we have, literally a, a divine gift where I can surrender my surface tension, mm -hmm. like a drop of water, mm -hmm. I can break that surface tension and flow into you and we become one. Yeah. I feel like so many people never experience that in relationship. 
I feel blessed to have had that experience. And I feel like I often get to have that experience and it seems rare and it seems very difficult to try to explain. So I'm glad you're talking about it. Once you have that experience with someone, you're bonded like, like a Siamese twin. Yeah. Right. Which doesn't mean that you never get annoyed or you never, you know, have those personality conflicts or anything like that, but it does create that deep, deep bonding. It's perfect. You get annoyed about things, Uh not about each other. Mm -hmm. So our grandparents, talking about your grandparents, when they got married, they married each other. Mm -hmm. Things about each other, they really didn't like. (laughs) So they spent their life bickering. Oh, like crazy. About things. Uh Uh-huh. But things are just things. Mm. They would never divorce each other. Nope. What, not have you? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. We are the exact opposite. We love everything about each other. Mm. We just don't need each other. So a man says, I love everything about my wife. Until? Now, why does she want a divorce? (laughs) You love everything about her. Shouldn't she be happy? Interesting. Yeah, because you love everything about her. Not, right. Love love isn't necessarily going in. It's not being experienced. That merging isn't happening. It's not about her. So let's use a painful example. Christopher Reeves. Mm -hmm. Superman. Yep. Fell off a horse. Paralyzed. Paralyzed. Mm Mm-hmm. <clears throat> his wife took care of him, let's say, for 10 years, mm-hmm. and then he passed away. She, she, she was hysterical. She went, she went into grief. Yeah. Imagine asking her, what are you grieving? Mm. What, are, what are you upset about? For the last 10 years, he was good for nothing. Huh. What did he do for you? Nothing. What were you what getting from him? For you, no. right? Well, right. Well, except I could ex- imagine that because all of that nothing, because they're not doing the same things and in that same plane of superficial life, they could have actually had a really deep connection. They, they certainly did. Mm-hmm. So if you ask her, what are you grieving? What did you lose? Her answer would be, I lost him. Uh, not love, but actually him. Well, what about him? Did you, nothing about him. I had him, now I don't have him. Mm. That's called bonded. A little less dramatic example. Your wife is out of town, and you miss her. Ask any husband, what do you miss about her? <laughs> What do I miss? I miss her. She's not here. Yeah, so what do you miss about her? Her cooking? Her, her jokes? You miss her. The sad thing is, the minute she walks in the door, it becomes I'm, about something. Right. I'm no longer happy. No. Okay, now you can do. That's interesting. Now, so, so sometimes the distance or that separation helps us actually be almost more connected to the essence of that person. Because it moves you past the things. Yeah. When you're together, there are things going on. Mm. When she's not there, the things stop. Yeah. And then you realize you really need her. Yeah. Not her services. That's really nasty. Mm -hmm. So actually... Marrying someone for something is abuse. Mm. You don't use people. Yeah. It's abuse. And if it's mutual, so it's mutual abuse. (laughs) Right. It's going both ways. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So now, what's happening in the world? It seems like it's coming apart at the seams. Yes. It seems like it's coming apart. It seems like it's coming apart. Yes, exactly. No pun intended. Yeah. Now, what's really happening is this. 
the confusion where there's something good about every bad and there's something bad about every good, mm -hmm. that, is, that is not a healthy state of affairs. Mm. That's called a world in exile. Mm. Like the simple example, Jews are in exile. What does it mean? It means we are the children of Israel, so we should be in the land of Israel. Mm. But we're not. That's called exile. So for 2,000 years, we haven't been where we belong. Hmm. Right. I think about now, Tibet and the Tibetans as well. The now we're back in, the, back in Israel, and the whole world says you don't belong there. Right. So there's something messed up with the world. Hmm. I'm sitting here in isolation with my wife for the last, I don't know, 12 weeks. Mm-hmm. You get to do a lot of thinking. Yes. Well, you if you don't have children around, you get to do a lot of thinking. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I haven't done a lot of thinking. Um, and you get to know yourself. Yeah. And I discovered that there are, there are certain things that I would love to improve. About yourself or in yes. the world. Mm -hmm. uh, about myself. Mm -hmm. I want to be better. I want to do better. And I've, I've actually resolved, I've made a New Year's resolution mm. to be better. And are there specific ways that you want to be better? But then I realized that I have made that same resolution 20 times. Uh -huh. I have intended to become better for 20 years and it still hasn't happened. Mm. Okay, so then what? So I know how to be better. Yeah. I know what's better. Yeah. I want to be better. Mm -hmm. And I have resolved to be better. Hmm. Why am I not better? I would love to hear the answer to this. Okay. So traditionally, conventionally, you would blame me or I would blame myself. Uh -huh. It means that I'm not sincere, I'm not really trying, because if I tried hard, you I would, would just do it. Right. Yeah. Here's my problem. If I know what's good, mm -hmm. if I want what's good, and if I resolve to have what's good, mm -hmm. why do I still need to try hard? What is that? I, I would love to know, like I said, I mean, because there are things where I, I know it's good or it seems like it would be beneficial and I still don't do it. And you blame yourself. And I blame myself. Mm -hmm. It's like that joke about Jewish guilt. You know how Jews are guilt ridden? Yeah. It's so bad that if a Jew doesn't feel guilty, we feel guilty about it. He blames himself. Right. <laughs> My own fault. My own fault. <laughs> I don't want to blame myself anymore. Mm. Because I'm not the only one. Right. This it seems to be a occurrence. universal thing mm -hmm. that people intend to be better than they are. Yeah. Almost always. Mm -hmm. Which means that we have a great potential and it never becomes real. Mm. It remains potential. Now, this is not our fault. Of course, if I tried hard, I would succeed. But the need to try hard mm -hmm. shouldn't, be. shouldn't be, you said? Yeah. I know it's good. I want to be good. I intend to be good. That's not enough. Okay, so what's the, where's the breakdown? What's the breakdown in there? The breakdown is that there's a condition in the world mm -hmm. that creates this gulf between what could be and what is. Hmm. That's not natural. It's not natural. No. Naturally, a person knows what's good, wants to do it, resolves to do it. Uh -huh. It should happen. Uh -huh. So how did this condition become? That's, that's exile. Hmm. That's a messed up world. There's a hurdle between what you want and what you can have. Yeah. 
that shouldn't be. Hmm. And yet it is. And yet it is. So what does it mean to come out of exile? Mm -hmm. What does it mean Mashiach is going to come? It simply means, and this is so fundamental, there's no miracles, there's no faith, there's no magical. When Mashiach comes, the, the potential that we have will become real. Hmm. People will be as good as they want to be. Hmm. Is that a miracle? Why is that a miracle? I want it. I can do it. So I did it. Hmm. That's a miracle. So imagine if tomorrow morning everyone wakes up and says, I'm good. I'm as good as I want to be. Mm -hmm. We would have a very nice world. We would have a very different world. Yeah. Well, okay, for time's sake, because we're, we're nearing the end, what, <laughs> what, what would you say to bring it together, right? There's the, the, the piece that's really stood out for me so far is the difference between intimacy and a relationship where, where people are bonded and just a relationship that is actually very common these days where it's more superficial and the sense of I'm marrying you because we like the same things or we're, we're you know, you have something I like, I have something you like. How, I mean, I know I have my ways, but how do you support people to really understand what intimacy actually is? Okay. Or is there anything else you want to leave people with? Uh, this, this obstacle mm -hmm. that doesn't let us merge with each other, it's unnatural. Yeah. You have two drops of water next to each other. Water mm -hmm. is supposed to flow. Why are there two drops? Mm. So something is interfering with the nature of the water. Uh-huh. And it's called surface tension. Mm. So what will it take to turn two drops of water into one drop of water? Mm. So right, as human beings, what will it take Hardly. to relax that surface tension? Yeah. Hardly anything. Touch it. Just break the tension. Huh. And you will naturally become one. I'm loving, I've never thought of it before as surface tension, but when I think about connecting with my partner, it really is like I have to relax through the surface tension before we are truly able to connect. We both do. Well, the surface tension means I got to be me. Uh -huh. But I don't want to be alone, so I want to be you. Mm. But the surface tension doesn't let me get past myself. Mm -hmm. And I want to. I desperately want to. Do you have any resources for people to understand that? How do I get past myself or how do I be in the presence of another and merge in that way? The secret is this. Get all things out of the way. Hmm. Stop, in, stop inviting things that you think are going to bring you together when in fact they keep you apart. Uh -huh. Don't think of things. Just be with each other. So if you asked your grandmother, what happens in the bedroom? I'm sure your grandmother would say, nothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> nothing is right. Uh -huh. In a bedroom, don't you bring things into a bedroom. It's not about a doing or a something. It's actually right. about the, the being. A no thing zone. Mm. The bedroom has to be sacred. Yeah. There are lots of things, but in the living room. Not in the bedroom. Huh. Don't have a television in the bedroom. Don't have a desk for last minute work. Don't have a computer. Mm. A bedroom is sacred. It's the place of us. Mm. No things. For example, a couple have been intimate. And afterwards, he asks her, how was it? Uh-huh. Right. We actually connect and we talk about it and we understand each other and we bond. Nope. No? No. Nope. How was it? Oh, it. Uh -huh. Excuse me. I, I, 
Was there an it in the room? I thought it, I thought it was just us. us. <laughs> how was? How were it? we? What about how were we? Okay, that's better. Uh -huh. But if it is we, yeah, you don't have to ask. Uh huh. Right, you already know. <laughs> you, you, you are the we. Yes, that makes sense. So if you have to ask, how was it? Then you weren't actually Did together. You see how that separated you? Yeah. Of course, you're alone in the world. Yeah. You had it. <laughs> it's so pornographic. Mm. It is an object. There was no object in the room. Because all you need is to eliminate things. Mm. Then you're one. There's nothing else to add. It's actually you don't to do take something away the to be one. Sex is disappearing. According to the official Pew studies or whatever, yeah. the average couple, married or not, have sex once a month mm. if they're in the mood. Wow. That's a disaster. Yeah. That's how a society becomes extinct. Mm. And the reason is they're bored. Uh -huh. They say they're tired. So, okay, so what would you leave people with if in the last minute? In the last minute. In the last minute, what do you want to leave people with? We have a magical, divine capacity to shed our surface tension mm -hmm. and to become one with another person. Mm. It is not human. It's literally divine. Yeah. It's beyond ego. It's beyond self-preservation it is a divine gift yes and the fact that we hate being alone yeah. that's also divine mm. a human being should be perfectly happy being alone mm. like leave me alone <laughs> why are we not good when we're alone and it's not because i don't know how to parallel park or or, or fry an egg no, it's like we don't have a connection, it seems like, to that, that deeper essence, to, the, to spirit. The need to connect to someone other than me, mm -hmm. that comes directly from God. Mm. It's not human. Interesting. It's, and it's, it's heavenly. Mm. So if we cheat ourselves out of that, yeah. thinking that we can replace it with a little love and a little sex, it's not working. We've got to wake up. Yeah. It's not working. We're having less love, we're having less sex, and we're completely alone in the world. Mm. So it's a really good idea to rediscover intimacy. Yeah. And that's why I wrote a book called The Joy of Intimacy. Great. I was actually wondering if you have this information somewhere. Okay, so The Joy of Intimacy, and where can people find it? Thejoyofintimacy.org. <laughs> Great. Great. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here and for sharing your wisdom. And again, I can see there's so much more to go into here and we could be digesting this. It's like it's a sermon or, you know, going to temple in my days. It's uh, very deep wisdom that will take a long time, I think, to understand and reflect on. So I'm glad you have a book. I and kind of doubt that that's what they talked about in your synagogue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A little different than my synagogue, but yes. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Be well. Only good news. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and it gave you something to consider and explore in your life. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 to get a sense of how you can become a better lover and leader. You'll start to see how you can be both more respected and desired in your unique and genuine way. If you don't feel as confident or as excited about life or love as you'd like to be, this quiz is a really great starting point and will guide you toward a more passionate love life and a more inspiring and successful career. So again, text ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 or head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.